In 2021, the artist Pink released a song as a love letter to her daughter. It was called, That's All I Know So Far. In the song, she sings, I wish someone would have told me that this life was ours to choose. No one's handing you the keys or a book with all the rules. Even I can't teach you how to fly, but I can show you how to live like your life is on the line. I've thought a lot about this song, both as a message my mother would have said to me as she raised my young sister and I in a really challenging environment, and as a message I will one day share with my little girls, Maya, who is nine, and Drew, who is five, both my pride and joy. For those in the room who don't know me, my name is Misty Dykema, and I am the president and owner of Symantle, an amazing local small business, tonight's after-party sponsor, and if I do say so myself, one of the most badass marketing firms around. In addition to my love of building marketing campaigns, I have a deep passion for developing people. I teach others to believe it's actually our self-compassion, how nice we are to ourselves, not our self-esteem, the confidence we have in the things we do and produce that sets leaders on a path to self-love. I believe in that message so strongly that I use it every day in my business and leverage it as a mother, sister, daughter, and friend. But for a good majority of my life, the person who was hardest to teach this message was me. As a child, my parents struggled mightily to overcome their own trauma. Both suffered abuse and loss as children, but they fought to give me a better life than they had, and in doing so, presented me an image of bravery most kids don't get the chance to see. It is because I saw their fight that I learned how to fight in the same way, and because of them, I grew up wanting to live life intensely. And I'm doing that now, in my own way, hoping they heal as they watch me try. What I've come to learn about my childhood is that from a young age, I felt a void. Part of this was innate in me, but part of it was learned perfectionism and achievement seeking as I tried to keep the peace amidst a very unstable environment. While I'm a bit ashamed to admit it, I spent most of my life trying to fill this void with external things and people. My identity became so wrapped up in the roles that I played, the goals I set forth, the relationships I kept, that I had no idea who I really was at my core. So, within the past few years, I set out on an intentional journey to find the real me on the inside. And with the help of many mentors and friends, those I call my board of directors, I learned that I'm a bit of a pusher. I have really high expectations for myself and everyone around me, but I've also learned that I can make people believe anything is possible. And that's a trait I'm really, really proud of. One coach dubbed me a flywheel, an idea stolen from Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, where he asserts that companies don't become exceptional because of a single invention or initiative, but rather from the accumulation of little wins that stack up over years of hard work, building to a point of breakthrough and beyond. This coach proclaimed that I not only believed in the flywheel concept for my work, but rather he said, I'm a living embodiment of it. Here's what he showed me. As a kid, I got straight A's, I danced, I modeled, I competed in beauty pageants, I wrote books, and I became the first to make the athletic teams. I transferred high schools and moved across the state at 16 when my parents split, still graduating top of my class. As a kid, I was a flywheel. In young adulthood, I applied multiple times to become the youngest person ever to go through Bradley's executive MBA program, clearly underqualified to join the cohort of C-suite execs. But I did it, and I graduated with a 4.0. As a student, I was a flywheel. As a mom, I suffered three miscarriages and sought fertility treatment after learning of a genetic defect requiring painful shots for nine months to finally have my second child. Shortly thereafter, my older child struggled with her mental health post-COVID, requiring me to fight the highest ranks of our local hospital affiliates and her school district for accurate diagnosis and treatment. As a mom, I am a flywheel. In 2013, an F4 tornado demolished our home to the foundation, and I spent the better part of three years replacing everything we owned, fighting insurance, moving three times, and ensuring that my infant daughter felt safe and secure, even though her crib was the only thing left standing. During the tornado, I was a flywheel. At work, I built a burgeoning business and at the same time built a side hustle focused on growing other people. And in each experience, I took the role of coach and facilitator, organizing ideas and setting direction to help people and organizations progress on their journeys, 
All the while, I'd endured bullying, sexual harassment, and countless examples of misogyny and double standards in my male-dominated field. And despite all of this, I am a flywheel at work. And what's amazing to see when I reflect on these elements of my life is that my core identity in all of these experiences is the same. It had nothing to do with the roles I played and everything to do with the light I've always felt inside me. Suddenly, this tiny flywheel insight that someone else named allowed me to see worth in myself. This coach provided me tangible evidence that I do not need external things or people to fill my own cup because I'm already doing that for myself. I know that now. I've gained new confidence because of this insight, and I no longer need those accolades in the same way I used to because I'm filling my own void with this newfound kindness and self-compassion. But even with all this work I've done to see myself in a new light, I find myself at a new crossroads moment, a new mess, if you will, where I have to leverage my flywheel yet again to see my way out and be kind to myself along the way. You see, last year, I announced to my Savannah leadership team that I am getting a divorce. I imagine most who have been through this experience would empathize with the pain that I'm about to share. And yet, it occurred to me that not everyone who goes through this experience has the same accountability I do to be a leader to 130 employees, 60 plus clients, two little girls, the community at large, nor do most have the responsibility I've bared most of my life to be a pillar of strength to my family and friends, held up as the one who doesn't screw up. So naturally, this message feels both challenging and a little scary to deliver. I'll admit, I rewrote this speech 137 times. These ladies can attest. And each time I asked myself, what is it specifically about this crossroads moment that I want to share? What is it about my flywheel energy, my focus on self-compassion, my belief that anything is possible that will make any sense to stay at this crazy stage of life? And here's where I landed. While I've done a great deal of work already to fill my void and see my worth, what this crossroads has provided is an ability to see myself even more fully. I feel the depths of who I am at a deeper level, and I am watching my flywheel in action every single day. You see, something happens when you realize all you have is you. That voice in your head that speaks to you when things get quiet, it gets louder, and it's the most powerful compass you have. For me, that voice began to whisper to me years ago. It would say, Misty, listen. Listen to your knowing. There's something more. And I did listen. I turned that whisper into honest conversations with myself, with my husband, with my family and friends, all the people I trusted most. And then one day, that voice got even louder. So loud, in fact, it turned into a yell. At one particularly traumatic low point this past summer, that voice said to me, Misty, you can't do this anymore. And shortly thereafter, to my surprise, it said again loudly and boldly, Misty, there is more for you. So as I sat reflecting on these voices in my head one late summer afternoon, I felt the sun on my face and I watched my kids playing across the lawn and I asked myself, what should I do with this voice? How could I ever hurt my family? How could I ever hurt my children? And as I admired these two beautiful sisters laughing and playing together, suddenly I heard a different voice, not my own, and it said, Misty, the kids will be okay if the adults are okay. A few weeks later, I remember looking at myself in the mirror, puffy-faced after a good cry with mascara-stained cheeks and bloodshot eyes, and again, I heard that different voice, not my own, say, Misty, you will be okay. You can do this. You have to. And I remember staring deep into my own eyes, trying to recognize myself as that reflection stared back at me. And I heard my own voice say, yes, I can. I know who I am. And if I know nothing else, I know my heart and I know my fight. So look, I'm so in the middle of this mess that I'd be lying if I told you I had it figured out. I'm standing in the mess as we speak. But I often think about what I would want to share with my little girls at this stage of my journey. And I also think about myself as the little girl that needs some encouragement right now. So taking a lesson from Pink's playbook, I want to share with you what I think I know so far, even as I'm in the middle of this mess. So far, I know it's okay to be sad and angry and scared and lonely. I know it's okay to look back at the life I once led and grieve the loss of those memories. Those memories have emotions tied to them, and it isn't bad to miss them. That means there was something special there. 
Those memories made me the person I am today, and I will carry them with me always. But so far, I also know it's okay to be happy. I can say with confidence at this stage of my life, I'm more free than I ever have been before. The joy I feel in my heart about the person that I've become is also real. For the first time in my whole life, I feel full. No void to fill. I'm not asking anyone to fill my cup. I only feel a richness of seeing myself as a complete and worthy human, not a leader, not a mom, not a friend, not a daughter, just a human, doing the very best I can to get by. And finally, so far I know that so many people had it so much worse than I do, and because of that, if I do nothing else as I grieve and grow at this stage of life, it's good to be grateful for all I have and remind myself that I'm doing okay. I'm managing a whole heck of a lot, and I'm doing it well. So here I am. I'm Misty, the flywheel, pushing through every day, not knowing where I'm going, but knowing where I'm from, and doing my best to take this one chance I get to live this one life, my life, no one else's. I'm not seeking approval or validation, but I am seeking connection with the ones I love. And I hope someday when my girls are older that they look back on who their mom was and they remember that, yes, mom was a business owner and a leader of many. But mom was a real person making real mistakes and learning as she pushed along. I want them to remember that I showed up bravely, authentically, and honestly, just like my mom did before me and her mom did before her. And I want them to remember that I just showed up and I kept showing up every day, making it my mission at this stage of life to be so full of love and compassion that my cup is filled to the brim, spilling over onto all those around me in ways they have never seen before. And maybe, just maybe, if my little girls and I are looking back and having a conversation about this stage of our life, I will say to them, girls, I want you to know that this life is yours to choose. No one's handing you a keys or a book with all the rules. And even I can't teach you how to fly, but I hope you always live like your life is on the line. Woo!